You're watching The Adrian Bauer Project. Hello, 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 hello. Many, many thanks for choosing to click my thumbnail and to watch my content. Very much appreciated as always. Okay, so uh, today's video, bit of a, uh, a double special for you, uh, as you can tell from the thumbnail. Um, later on in the video, we're going to be talking about the Lord of the Rings, the living card game again. Yes, I know. Now, um, if you think back, uh, getting on for nearly a year ago, I did a video about uh, storage uh, for the cards and, and all your bits and bobs, and I soon came up again to why that had its limitations, so I'm going to be talking about that later. Uh, but before all that, um, you've seen all the Ferrari about the new Amazon Prime show, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, and I thought, I'm going to give my 10 pence worth here for what it's worth. So uh, I'm going to kick off with my views on that show. OK, I think I better do a little intro before I get into the meat of my my point and how I see everything here. Uh, I'm going to get on about woke culture. I think woke culture is very much like communism. Great idea on paper, doesn't work in reality. There are just so many different points of view, so many variables. It is never, ever going to work. And I think the more it's gone on, I think the more people are starting to, to realise that. Even people who were supporters of woke are starting to see hang on a minute this isn't what i signed up for uh, woke always waved the flag for diversity and it just it's division no other way of putting it their idea of diversity is division their idea of include inclusiveness and all that that's okay but not as if it's a heterosexual white male. They absolutely hate heterosexual white males. Uh, another pot thing I don't like about all these woke activists is that they seem to think screaming at you right up to you in your face, calling you names, calling you ism, calling you ist is the way to change your mind. And then they get a punch in the face and they're the ones that uh, crying foul for that. And, you know, there's only so much people will take. And I think 2020, we are going to be seeing the end of this fad. And it is a fad. Let's face it. All popular culture has its run, be it with fashion, music, film. It all has its fill. Then we get to saturation point where people are sick to the back teeth of it. And I think already people are sick to the back teeth of woke culture. Now, when we heard that uh, Amazon Prime were going to be making a new Lord of the Rings series based around the Silmarillion, I, along with all other Tolkien fans, were, yes, fantastic, can't wait. Now, I'm not an expert in Tolkien law. I love the books. I absolutely love the films, even the Hobbit films. I love the Hobbit films. I think they're brill. There's a lot of Tolkien fans don't like them. I can understand why, but me and Claire, we love them. As for the law part of it, there are vast chunks that I do not know. I haven't read the Silmarillion. I'll hold my hands up there. And when they said they were going to do it based around the Silmarillion, I thought, fantastic, because I've not read it. I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about it. But after doing a little bit of digging, you know, I've, I've learnt bits and bobs from uh, the age before the Lord of the Rings films is set and all the Fellowship of the Ring. So I do know a few bits and bobs, but I, by no way 
and I call myself uh, an expert in it. So I say, they said that we were doing a film uh, series, I thought, fantastic. And then the alarm signals started ringing. We had Lenny Henry saying he'd been signed up to play a black hobbit. Uh, I love Lenny Henry, I think he's a funny guy, like a lot of the things that he's been in, not that flying, a lot of the things that he's been in, but I thought, there, there aren't any black hobbits. There's nowhere in the books that say there are black hobbits, but I thought, mm, I don't know, I'm not sure about that. And then we started to hear even more horror stories about where this series were going. And you've all seen the videos now by now. Um, you've all seen the trailer. And as always, it seems to me that the woke, uh, the wokists out there hate feminine women. Is it is a lesbian thing because it is lesbian thing where they hate men, but they go out with women that look more like men than what men do, and that more like men than what men do. That confuses me the hell out of me. That does. So we've got Galadriel there, where her strength and her power was through her fem feminism, both as a strong woman and the caring side of her as well but no we can't have that we've got to have this Joan of Arc butch uh, female character that Gladrell never was apparently <clears throat> her husband whose name slips <laughs> slips memory at the minute if I say I am not not a professor of Tolkien at all uh, he was th the his lynch been strength in the two, he's now become this white, white beta male, as they're called now. As if you see any advert now, every male, white male in an advert today is the idiot, is the moron, is the bumbling oaf, is the one that doesn't do anything right, is the one that either needs the woman to do it all for him, or they've got to have um, a friend of colour, shall we say, who needs to point him, show him the error of his ways. And this is what the silent majority are getting sick of. And now they're having a go at Tolkien. What dud, dud, does absolutely piss me off is, it's now turned out that the writers and creators of the series don't have the rights to the Silmarillion. All they've got are the rights to the first three uh, three books uh, in the series, Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers, Return of the King. And they're just basing their whole billion dollar series around what turns out to be less than 150 pages of appendices. On top of that, they are now just, for, as far as I can see, they are just ticking boxes by putting in uh, actors of colour that shouldn't be there. And I'll tell you why they shouldn't be there, because this whole mythology that Tolkien wrote was for Britain. It seemed that Scandinavians had got Norse mythology, they got all the North mythology there. Every other culture, you know, they got theirs, but Britain didn't have one for itself. So he wrote it as a mythology for, you know, not the medieval, it's, it's not medieval, it's, it's a myth, you know, yes, there were black people that were in Great Britain when the Romans came. Romans had black slaves and they had white slaves, they enslaved the entire of Britain, they enslaved them. We were Roman slaves, white people like me, we were serfs, we, we were there to serve them, so don't get on your eye horse about there's only black people that are slaves, white people were slaves too. They came over with the Romans, and when the Romans thought we've had enough of this, they buggered off. All the black people went with them because, you know, there was nothing here for them, so they went back with the Romans. That is why this mythology and our culture is white based. We are predominantly white, white country. That's what we are. And that's what the mythology is based around. Now, people who are screaming, supporting this new series, um, 
calling Tolkien, saying he's anti-Semitic and he was a racist, but this is where my point comes up. If he was anti-Semitic and he was a racist, why are you making a $1 billion franchise series call up, whatever you were, celebrating his works? If you think he was that much of a racist and anti-Semitic and anything else you want to call him, why are you spending that much money on doing a series celebrating his work? What are you going to be doing next? Making a, a movie about Mein Kampf and then race changing and changing the sex of characters in Mein Kampf? I don't know. This is what baffles normals like me when it comes to this whole woke thing. You're just so hypocritical. So hypocritical. Okay, there's, there's plenty of mythology out there that you can do do yourself. And I've just done about five minutes research on the computer. And let's look at Zulu mythology. Now, in Zulu mythology, um, their creator was Unkulunkulu. I hope I pronounced that right. I hope I've not, not destroyed it in any way. Um, he was seen as the creator of uh, mankind, came to earth as, uh, as a reed or a plant. Uh, transformed himself into human form so he could teach the Zulu nation how to hunt and grow crops. And there's just loads, and that's just that's just skimming, not even the surface on this mythology. There's, that is just crying out to be made, and you could have an, an entire all black cast there because it's Zulu mythology. But if you were going to have Uncle Unkulu, played by Michael Fassbender, because you want to be inclusive and diversive, I think the Twatterati would go out into meltdown. They would hate it. And, you know, this is the problem. This is where all the backlash is coming from, because they say they want diversity. There's no more diverse mythology or story than Tolkien. Every story of fantasy that's come out since the 1950s is copied and just outright stolen from Tolkien. You don't need to add characters. I mean, they've added characters that aren't even in the books. Even uh, Peter Jackson struggled to get all the characters in. He left out Tom Bombadil, one of the all time favorite characters in Tolkien. And a lot of the fans weren't happy about that because he knew he'd only got a certain amount of space in which, you know, the characters could fit and how the story arc goes. But Tom Bombadil was a very much loved character in Tolkien and he was totally ignored. Not, uh, I don't think through purpose, it was just because he couldn't be fitted in. But now in this series, this Rings of Power, we're race changing uh, elves. Elves are described as fair skinned and dark haired. Um, dwarves, we've got a black dwarf woman without a beard. Now I've got nothing against, you know, black actors at all. But when you're putting something like that in a series, in a mythology, it sticks out like a sore thumb that this is done just for ticking boxes and knocking videos over. This is just a box ticking exercise and this is where the backlash has come from. Um, if you do actually read Tolkien, actually read it, not just hear what some green haired 16 year old screaming racist into a YouTuber's camera is going to tell you. If you actually read, there are black characters in The Lords of the Ring. They were the Herogians. If you think to The Two Towers and The Return of the King, uh, there were that stream of uh, mercenaries going through the Black Gates where Sam and Frodo were having to hide. They were there. They were obviously um, I don't know, some, some kind of Muslim type uh, people. They, they obviously came from, you know, from that region. 
um, the Herodians that were coming riding the big elephants, uh, they were of colour. So there are people of colour in there. And if you, from from what I've been, you know, from what I can gather in the Silmarillion, you'll find out why the Herodians and these mercenaries uh, side with Saruman and Sauron and why they hate the people of Gondor and all that. That is why they sided against them instead of joining the fight with them. You've actually got to go out and read the book instead of listening to somebody who uh, hasn't even watched any of the films, never mind read the books. Um, now, there is one thing that, you know, I'm looking forward to, and that is this series starting on the television. Because for me, that is going to be, it's going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. You're going to get passive Lord of the Rings fans like me and other people. They'll sit there and watch this and say, this is utter woke garbage. And I think it's going to signal the end of wokeism when the silent majority are going to stand up. So we've had enough of this. There are, you know, there are people all around the world, all races, all colours, all creeds that love the Lord of the Rings stories. They don't want to see the law bastardised. They don't want to see the law changed. They don't want to see characters added that weren't there. They don't want to see characters race changed just for the sake of wokeism. They don't want it. And I think this is going to be the death knell for wokeism because at a billion dollars, I think this is going to be one massive flop. And that will get Hollywood in a panic thinking, this needs addressing now, we need to stop doing this and get back to how things were. Um, but Jeff Bezos, if you're listening, I probably, I know you won't be, but if you are, I've got a way you can save face and you can save yourself a billion dollars and make this whole series a success. It involves filming a new pilot episode. Now, what you could do, all these characters that you've got in this series, fine, they can carry on being who they are, but this is my idea. Might sound a bit naff, but a bit cheesy, but this is how I can see it panning out where everybody can get on board and we can all be happy and enjoy the series as it is. The pilot series, I would have starting off in sort of it's like a cosplay Lord of the Rings convention. Out in space, there's a solar flare that messes with the time space continuum or whatever. All these people that are in the hall are transported into Middle Earth where they have to they have to act out the characters that they turned up as in order to get the ring of power which means they can get back to their own time and their own reality. Work on it around that way. And I think everybody will be on board. Trying to call this another version of Lord of the Rings is going to be not going to work at all. And people have already called it out. So there we go. That's my view on it. Fill my comments with racism, racist. Call me an ist, call me a foe. Call me what you will, because you've used these terms that many times now. They've lost all their power. It's water off a duck's back now, because everybody's just sick to the back teeth of you. Sick to the back teeth of woke. And like I say, I think 2022 is going to be seeing the end of this fad that we're all doing. OK, so there we go. That's my views on the Amazon Prime series. Let's get on to the fun things and let's have a look at my new storage system. Right, so if you can remember, like I say, a few months ago now, uh, I did a video about storage of the Lord of the Rings cards that you get because, as you know, um, the box, that the original, this is the original uh, box the original release, I don't know how big the uh, re-release is, 
but I was just doing it by the box that I had. But uh, when you've got your cars in nice plastic uh, protective sleeves, it's physics that they are going to uh, create more volume. And these, this box, you know, it wasn't going to be holding them the way that you'd want to hold them. So I devised a way of coming uh, that uh, using the bits that you got in the box that you could make some storage for it. it wasn't long before I realised I come up against a problem that that's OK if you're just having the core set and the first um, the first run of the uh, what was it Mertwood cycle it's the Mertwood cycle so you got all the cards in the core set and then you got the six packs adventure packs to go with it they all fitted nice and well in there and it's great if that's all you're going to get but I want to get them all try well try and get them all uh, if I can so then I soon found out their limitations of what I was doing here so I went back online had a look around and there are on the SD site there's somebody who does like a wooden box that you can get them all in all your cards in when they sleeve and they've got the dividers but it was like 20 pounds uh, per cycle and I thought yes they are very very well made they look great they're probably as strong as anything and they do the job fantastically but I don't want to be paying 20 pounds for it so I had to have a look round and this is what I found. I went into my local shop called the Card Factory. You may have one in uh, your town where you are. Uh, abroad, I, I don't know, I, it's not going to be Card Factory, but it's something else. But there are these gift boxes. Now they look like shoe boxes and they are really sturdily made. Now this one from my Card Factory is £1.79 a lot cheaper than 20 quid now the dimensions you need to be looking for is the box that is 24 by 17 by 10 centimeters uh, it has a number on the back as well of 0020495 so that is the box that you need to be looking for now in here what you're going to be able to get in there are all your cards that are sleeved and it's going to be uh, a nice, nice way of, uh, let me just take all this out of the way because it's just getting in my way. Oh, uh, it's going to be a great way of saving all your cards and keeping them clean. So as you can see, hopefully, <laughs> that's what it looks like in there. Uh, this side, I have got the Mertwood cycle. And on this side, I've got all the cards from the Duaro Delph cycle. Now, this is all the encounter cards. It's not the hero cards uh, and the cards that you use in your hand or the attachments and the events. This is just all the enemy cards and the quest cards. And as you can see, you can get two cycles in there per box. So in this one, like I said, I've got, I don't know if you can read that, got the Mertwood cycle, I've got the Shakes, and I've got the Dwarro Delph cycle. I can't say that, sir, it's a bit, a bit of a tongue twister. But they all fit into this one box. Now, the Mertwood cycle, I um, don't know why, probably because it was the first, first run. There aren't as many cards in there, so you may have to put yourself a little stopper in there. Um, I've made a little uh, divider just down there, uh, you could just use the cardboard insert that comes, cut it down to size that you want, and that fits in there. And then all your instructions for your adventure packs will all fit nicely in there. And I think that looks rather spiffy myself. So that's all those in there. Uh, I'll just put that <laughs> lid the right way around. Uh, I'll show you in here, this is where we've got all my player cards. So, as you can see here, we've got leadership deck there, we've got the tactics deck, spirit deck, law deck, and in that bit there, we have got the, the cards of no discernible uh, faction. So, that's like Gandalf and 
so other events and attachments as well and as you can see at the minute I've got the uh, first two cycles uh, complete uh, apart from the nightmare packs so that's what the, all the uh, hero cards look like in there so by the time I've got another two cycles I think we're going to be having another box and we're going to have to split uh, all your hero cards between the two but you'll see what I mean when you're buying yourself and as you said that's as I say that's just uh, one of the card inserts that came in the, in the box you get these expansion boxes take it out so there we go so it's actually just made from that card in, insert there so you're not having to go out and buy extra bits and bobs either you just uh, just use what you've already got okay so uh, another thing as well they do keep falling over that is a bit of annoyance so you might want to do a little bit of packing in there uh, just while you fill in the box up because they do keep falling over and it's annoyance okay right so that's how I'm uh, storing, storing my cards it's a nice cheap and easy way if you haven't got to, too much money just do it that way uh, one other thing I'd like to show you now because as you can see now I've taken the middle out of that out of my core box and it's back to, back to square one uh, that's where I keep all my bits and bobs. I'd like to show you this. So uh, these little plastic uh, plastic doobies are what the adventure packs come in. So don't throw them away because you can keep all your player tokens in here. So you can get the lid off. So they're all in there already. You just flip the lid and use them uh, in your game. And then when you come to pack them away, you don't have to sort them all out again next time you play. Uh, what I have found as well are these little coin holders. Now I went on to Amazon for these. These actually came from China. Uh, I think they were, it was £8.50 uh, for 50. And they are 19 millimetres in size. And they are awesome. And you, you get a pack of 50 and there are enough to do all your tokens in there and it keeps them a bit fresher because I've noticed the more I was playing with these the paper starting to peel a bit oh, excuse me windy pops <laughs> was starting to peel a bit on the the tokens so they needed a bit of protection and all it is I can uh, undo this one they do just pop open put your little token in there and you close it short up to you whether you want to glue it for a bit to add your security don't use modeling glue because they can make clear plastic go frosting you don't want that what i'd use is the smidgen of super glue or some white glue you know the pva glue or an all-purpose glue like you who was something uh, the smallest of parts just around the edge and then you glue them together and that will keep them all on there and as you can see I've got uh, four of these and if you put them in a box like that they'll all go in nice and snugly uh, what I've used at the minute I bought, bought a pack of these from a craft shop they'll just look like little wooden discs that I'm using for uh, when I've exhausted cars instead of having to keep turning them around and everything like that uh, I am hoping to get some more of these plastic uh, coin holders and some kind of coloured disc to put in so I can don't have to keep using these because these are a, a little bit messy with them being wooden the, the bark keeps rubbing and coming up in bits so there you go uh, like I say if you if you'd followed my way of doing that that's using the box for the storage which you'll see in the link at the end uh, the video for that that's going to be okay for all your core cards in this original set plus your six adventure packs there's going to be more enough room in there doing it the way i showed you but if you're going to continue on by expansion sets and more adventure sets then you're going to need something else and like i say if money 
is a bit tight, which it's going to be for a lot of us now, then £1.79, you're going to get two cycles in that. Um, plus, oh, I forgot to say as well, yeah. Oh, in here, I've also got the Kazadoom expansion set. Of course, we've got we finished the Mirkwood cycle, so the first expansion set, uh, expansion set for that is the Kazadoom, where you've got the uh, next three quests and you get three packs of cards. They're all in here, and the six adventure packs as well. Uh, sorry, I didn't say that before, but it's just coming into my mind. So there we go. I am old and I'm getting very forgetful. But it's like I say, plenty of room for two cycles in there. So there you go you don't have to go spending 20 30 pound on the fancy boxes because these are really strong cardboard and you can use them like that so there we go a bit long-winded today but I hope you stick, stuck with me and uh, thanks for watching many many thanks for watching please remember to subscribe to my channel and to ring the little notification bell